Uh, the next two questions will come from the front row center. Uh, Sandy and JJ, feel free to chime in here too. Uh, this was the first game of the series where you all held Vegas below 50% shooting. Did you, you talked about it before the game that sometimes the off like better offense can lead to lead to better defense. Did you feel like that was kind of the, how the momentum went today or what did you like on that end of the four in general? Look, I think to be quite honest, it was, we can be a great defensive team, but you have to be locked in to do it. And we weren't for two games which was strange for me, but they, you know, in trans transition D just simple things at one on one. I mean, that's what they'll beat us with, with, um, so it really just came down to, um, effort and knowing that your teammates got your back if we needed it with our congestion. So, you know, in practice, we just had to remind them what that looks like, but in the end it's, they know what it looks like. They know how it feels. It was just going out and doing it and doing it together. And, uh, offensively it does help when the ball's going through the hole. Uh, that gives you more confidence. It helps that we're at home. What an amazing crowd. Um, it was great that we, all the support we got. And, you know, hopefully we'll take that home court advantage on Wednesday as well. Stay, staying in the front row center. Hi, everybody. Congrats on the win. This is a question for both of you. Um, this was the Liberty's first home win in the finals. Hey, Ruby. Oh. Hello, sorry, you're late. <laughs> you can be sorry. That's okay. yeah, that's okay. She'd be good. All right. Um, congrats on the win, Stewie. Um, this is any of you can answer again. Um, this is the Liberty's first home win in the finals. So, how much does it mean to all three of you to be a part of that history for this organization? Yeah, I mean, just look at the crowd and the amount of people that support us and. Um, it means a lot to us to go out there and play at the level that we know that that we're capable of and um, to fight for um, the entire game. So uh, it definitely means a lot to me and a lot to our team. I'll get to a couple more from the room before we switch to Zoom for a couple. Second row center. Hi, all. Um, I want to start with JJ and then go across if that's all right. JJ, I'm curious if you could take me through what allowed that middle pick and roll with you and Sabrina to work so well tonight. Yeah, I think we, you know, we prided ourselves on screening as post players. That was one of the things that we talked about coming into into these games that we can do better. So just making sure that we, you know, hit them and made sure that they felt us with the screens and then rolling and getting open. And then obviously Sabrina's ability to be able to facilitate and, and you know, spread the ball. So I think it was, I think it was both of those things. And Sandy, for you, you you mentioned the crowd and the support. Uh, Joan Jett made her return to watching the Liberty this afternoon. H how do you think that is a full circle moment for the franchise? Well, it is for me because I think I don't. I probably have told you that one of my first uh, games at Madison Square Garden, Joan Jett was there with that voodoo doll, and and I was like, you know, just new to the WNBA, like, okay, dokey, this is interesting, but it was great. I think you know when famous people come and watch us and support us. It means that we're growing as a league. Um, and I didn't see the halftime performance, but I'm sure little Kim was pretty cool. Um, but you know, Ted's there just, you know, and I think this is a buzz just walking. Jason. <laughs> Jason. Ted. Yeah. But yeah, just walking to just walking from the uh, apartments today and everyone, everyone knew who we were and it was amazing. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Okay. I, you can feel like a community is behind us. And I think that makes it really special for the city of New York. And hopefully we can keep it going and, and keep building that momentum. And Stewie, finally for you, um, I asked JJ sort of about pregame, what this team needed to prove today. And she sort of said, we need to prove that we belong here. So I'm curious how you think this game allowed you to prove that y'all belong here in the finals. I mean, I think that, that's that's pretty much it. We came up and we we showed what we can do. Um, you know, obviously we were battle tested in in Vegas and down, you know, down o two, uh, but we still have an opportunity and a chance. And now this now the series is one two, and we still have an opportunity opportunity and a chance. And I think for us is well, today I wasn't looking past Sunday, you know. So now I'm not looking past Wednesday. And making sure that these days that we have, we continue to get better and we know that we have our crowd behind us and we continue to fight. All right, everybody. We have a lot of folks with questions. We're going to try to get to as many as we can. I want to jump to Zoom for at least two right away. We're going to start with Sasha and then Lindsay, and then we'll return to the room. Sasha. All right. I have two 
questions, one for coach and one for JJ. Coach, um, what does it take for JJ to have a game like she did today? 27 points, eight boards, blocks, assists, steal. What puts her in that sort of position, especially for us watching all the way here from the Bahamas? We, we love when we get to see her touch the ball. What puts her in that sort of position to have that kind no of bias. game today? <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's a big piece of what we wanted to do and how we thought we could exploit them. And she's, like I said, it's been, and we wouldn't be here without JJ. And we talked about the journey from the beginning of the season with a new team and, and getting it together. And, but JJ is just keeps getting better and better. Um, and, you know, at both ends of the floor and it, it's her, her commitment to herself to be excellent, but it's her commitment to this team to be excellent. Cause that's what we need. And it says a lot about her, but you know, what I'm really happy with as well is we got a lot of great leaders, but JJ's voice has been heard these last few days and that leadership really does matter to us. And it gives confidence. She's inspiring, um, you know, by actions, but also the words and, um, and I'm really proud of her cause that's what she's capable of. And she's only going to keep getting better. All right, and final question for you, JJ. I think this is about the eighth or ninth straight triple-double, not triple-double, double-double for you going into this game. Uh -huh. um, you, you've, you've obviously been inside the paint. You, you're doing, you, you were spectacular from the three-point line. What does it take to do that night in and night out um, in this final series? Um, I think just focusing, obviously, and having a, a level of intensity coming into the games and um, fell short tonight with the with the double doubles by two, but that's okay. Um, just keep it going, just keep attacking the boards and um making sure that I'm doing whatever I can to make sure that we get the win. All right, we're gonna go Lindsay, Jackie, and then return to the room. Lindsay. Hey all Lindsay Schnell from USA Today here. Stewie, first of all, thank you for bringing Ruby in. That just made my day. Um, <clears throat> while you guys, she's going up and down right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so while you guys were playing this game in front of a great crowd, like Sandy mentioned, the Iowa women were playing in their football stadium. They had 55,000 people show up to cheer them on in an exhibition against DePaul. I just wondered what it's like to be in this moment. Obviously you've been playing forever. You played for a very supportive community at UConn, but to have two fan bases in two very different parts of the country show up, sell out. We've got a bunch of NWSL games going on that are packed right now. Why is everyone like finally on the women's sports train? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been telling them this whole time that they should get behind us. And, and now to see that people are continuing to, to show up, um, it's it's unbelievable. You know the crowd that we had today, and like you said at Iowa right now, and how people are just tuned in with with a lot of women's sports across the world. Um, we're just going to continue to be role models and continue to be great and continue to demand for more because you know we have this platform that uh, we're speaking for for those who can't, and we continue to fight for that and and be our best. All right, next um, question. Really, can, I, can I ask a really quick follow up, Ron? Uh, Stewie, to your point, as Ruby's dancing around, and I know you made a comment uh, during your MVP speech about being a role model for her. What's it like for someone like Ruby and other little girls? Like This is normal to them to see these huge crowds support women's sports. A friend of mine, her little girl asked the other day, do, bo do boys play soccer too? Because she had only ever been to women's pro soccer games. I mean, I think just continuing to to show um young kids like like ruby and and a lot of others the the potential and the po possibility of of what is possible and and you know making it normal you know making it so she she expects this every time she walks into a WNBA arena um and when she goes to other sporting events but uh, she has a lot of amazing role models to look up to a lot from obviously our team but um ruby's gonna see everything that we see and and that's what I what I hope all these other kids see too is um, we're going to continue to to make sure that we raise the bar and and heighten the standard <clears throat> for the next generation. Okay, last one for Zoom, and then a couple from the room. Uh, Jackie, go ahead. Hey, this one's for JJ and uh, Stewie. Um, you guys both talked about not having that grit in the last couple of games. How did you guys get to that? How did you guys lift each other up to get to that point? And then Stewie, a follow-up question does, I know you said that Ruby knows that mama is like poo 
Asma and then the W symbol. Does she know that mama got the big win tonight as well? You can go first. <laughs> um, I, I, pro Ruby probably knows because uh, I think my mood would be a lot different. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so she's allowed to be here right now, but um, happy with the work that we put in and, and excited to, to look forward to what's to come Wednesday. Yeah, and to go back to your first question, it just came to us, you know, having conversations in the locker room about what we needed to do um, to be better, to be there for one another. Um, <laughs> yeah, ultimately, uh, we, we had to have a level of pride coming into this game, and um, we knew that our fans were going to be behind us, and New York was was going to be watching and supporting, and that's what we wanted to do is go out there and play with a lot of pride and a lot of heart. Next question, third row to your right. Yeah, coach, if uh, if Chelsea Gray is not able to play in game four, she obviously left this game injured. Does that change anything about what you guys do against? Uh... No, not at all. I mean, we can't, you know, when someone goes down, someone else will step up. Our mindset is more about what we need to do, okay, to get ready for Wednesday. And that's it. Chelsea plays. She doesn't play. Our preparation won't change. Uh, these players were locked in. I felt it these last few days. Obviously, we weren't happy with what we how we played, but we knew we were capable of much more. But we've got to make sure. I don't like it when someone's out. I'd rather them play because you can get the, that mindset. But I'll make sure that they're we're locked in and, and we're ready for Wednesday. Uh, next question, uh, standing in the back center. Hey, guys, when, when you have two games that just do not look like the Liberty basketball that we've been used to this year, and then you come out and have this great dominating performance on your home court, what, what was the biggest difference you guys saw? I mean, what what allowed you to flip that switch to get back to the Liberty basketball we're used to? Players answer. Any of you? Mm, I think just taking a look at, at ourselves and taking a look in the mirror and understanding um, the basketball that we played those two games in Vegas wasn't anything that we were proud of and making sure that, you know, we came together even more as a team. And we talked about in the beginning of this playoffs, it's, it's a roller coaster of a journey. And, you know, even though we were down, we wanted to continue to fight. We wanted to continue to have each other's backs. We knew that the fans were going to come out and support us like no other. And and that's that's momentum for us. And and now, you know, coming away with the win for game three, we're, we're really happy to, to continue to keep our season alive, but know that we have a lot of work left to do. Three more questions from the room. Uh, next one, front row right. Good evening. Hello, all. Thank you for, uh, for taking the time. Congrats on the win. Coach, my question is for you. You preach the importance of a hot start, and you generally outplayed Vegas in the first half, but only went into the locker room up three. What was your message to the team in the halftime locker room, and how do you think they took those words to heart in the second half? Yeah, look, obviously, I thought it was about the third quarter now. I said we have to have good starts, and we have to come out of the locker room at halftime, and we didn't do that in Vegas. Um, so, you know, it was just more about things we got to tidy up, but it's more keep the foot on the pedal. We just got to keep playing. You know, we had some good looks. Um, you know, we executed quite well. We just need to do it better. So that's all I was focused on. Let's just be better than what we were in the first half. Uh, next next question, third third row to the right. Hi, JJ. Hi, Brianna. Uh, in that third quarter, you guys held the aces to just 10 points total. And the two of you were picking up each other and picking up a lot of the perimeter players. And I think you might've both had multiple blocks in that third quarter. So how does that with, you know, seeing JJ wag her finger after a block or you meeting uh, you meeting Asia at the high point, right? Like, how does that kind of help you two play off each other and, and kind of bring that momentum forward? Yeah, I just think that's that's what it takes, right? It takes knowing that if you if you go for a steal and you're denying a pass and, you know, your player gets around you, that your teammates are going to be there to help you. And it gives you that extra confidence to be able to do that. Um, the entire game. And um, when you build that level of trust, you, you see a team that's locked in and that plays at the level that we played, um, played at tonight defensively and offensively. Uh, next question, uh, second row center, right? For JJ, I know that Sandy has talked this week about it being time for action, not emotion, but you had talked yesterday about being angry and embarrassed in game two. What kind of emotions did you have coming into, into today? And what did you feel throughout the game? Yeah, I just came in, um, I mean, energized, obviously. Energized that we had a, a new opportunity, obviously. Um, yeah, I kind of just drew on the same things, just playing with a lot of a lot of passion and um, just not wanting to let the moment pass us by and have that what-if type of feeling, you know? And so 
Um, those were the things that I kind of came into the game thinking about and what I used to kind of fuel me. Um, and then obviously during the game, it was, it was energy again. Like the crowd was amazing. The fans were amazing. Um, and our team was locked in and in sync. And um, I think y'all asked us, you know, like the aces were having fun. Like, when are we going to have fun? And I think tonight was fun because we were doing our job um, and we were playing hard and that's, that's how we play. John Quell, Sandy, Brianna, and most importantly, Rupi, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby. Yeah.